majority language is uh, Western Oruz, uh, known as Turkish in English usually. Uh, the Istanbul standard is official. There are other uh, Turkic varieties, usually from refugees from the former uh, Russian Empire, uh, such as uh, Crimean Tatars, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, outside of Turkic, however, you have a great number of language families represented within Turkey. Uh, the largest language family in the world is Indo-European, and it has quite a few representatives in Turkey. There's uh, the Albanian language, uh, Greek, uh, several Slavic varieties, uh, to a lesser extent, Romance varieties like French and Spanish. You know, German can also be found. Uh, Armenian is, of course, found. Uh, and the Indo-Iranic language family has two main branches, Indic and Iranic, and each of these has a representative in Turkey. Iranic, of course, through uh, Kurmanji Kurdish and also through Zaza, and Indic, not as obviously to people, but the Romani language, better known as Gypsy, is also spoken within the territory of Turkey. Outside of both Turkic and Indo-European, and somewhat to the focus of today's event, uh, there are several uh, representative, representatives of the indigenous languages of the Caucasus, uh, including Circassian, Laz, Georgian, uh, several Nakh Dagestanic varieties. Lesbian. Yeah, Lesbian is a Nakh Dagestanic variety, yeah. Um, just, uh, and then, of course, Semitic languages, such as uh, Arabic and Aramaic. Uh, are still alive in Turkey. I wish I could say alive and well. Um, since the uh, establishment of the Turkish Republic, uh, a very uh, firm official language policy has always been taken by the state. And uh, not only have uh, minority languages not been encouraged and supported, but uh, mother tongue education uh, has traditionally been illegal, even in private schools for almost all the languages I just listed. Um, the, uh, the current government of Turkey, uh, the AKP government, is well known for all its reforms and openings, which have now led to the benevolent situation wherein students may receive mother tongue education in private schools after the fifth year as an optional class, so in other words, the majority of speakers of minority languages in Turkey still have no access to mother tongue education. Um, the circumstances uh, for almost all of these languages are somewhat threatened within Turkey. So while, for example, Bulgarian and Georgian are very much living languages, not at all threatened, within the borders of Turkey, they too are under threat. And for very small languages, even smaller than something like Kurdish, like for instance, Circassian or Laz, the situation is very dire. The population is small. There are, you know, almost no children have access to mother tongue education. And even if it were given tomorrow, there's a big generation gap that's now been opened between the oldest generation that speaks it as an everyday language, a middle generation that understands the language but doesn't readily produce it, and a youngest generation which, even if it was provided with mother tongue education, would see it as something a bit distant. So, it's, uh, it's a precarious situation for most of these languages, including the languages that we've been looking at today by various uh, uh, nonprofit organizations and uh, left-wing groups have been uh, putting effort into both organizing outside the bounds of the state, that is through private institutions and things of this nature, to try to you know, raise awareness about the languages, provide some sort of education, but the primary uh, solution is to try to get state support for these languages. Uh, the smaller they are, the necessarily more threatened they are. And even for the largest minority language in Turkey, without any doubt, is Kurmanji Kurdish. And even that is, uh, we can say, still threatened within Turkey. So um, the, uh, there are now films being produced in you know, many of these languages, including Laws, which we just talked about. There's a famous uh, film called Son Bahar, which I recommend you see if you're interested in Turkish slash... Oh, no, that... No, it's not Son Bahar. I've been caught on camera slipping up. That contains Georgian and Armenian. It doesn't contain Laws. Um, there, though, is Georgian and Armenian. There are films now in Kurdish, a great number. Uh, people are trying to produce more art. There's a lot of music. Uh, for Laz, I can say the music of Kazım Koyuncu uh, is very well known uh, by everyone in Turkey. 
Uh, and, you know, this is something I'm personally very interested in. And uh, I think uh, what it, it, it shows that, you know, even the question of the legality of having mother tongue education or state support, it has to very much happen within a certain social context. So, you know, here in the U.S., there's not a concern for the idea of Kurdish as a minority language in the U.S. because it's an immigrant group, but there are Kurds here as well. There are laws here as well. There are, you know, speakers of Garifuna here as well. There's so many minority languages in any country, and when the community becomes organized, it can sort of start to come up with, you know, para-state initiatives and also try to gain support of uh, the state. And uh, it's very important. And what I do and what I encourage you all to come to, if you are interested in Kurdish, every Friday I, I host a Kurdish class. Come to Kurdish class. Where? 7 p.m. CUNY Graduate Center, room 6496. Not the next two Fridays. We're on spring break. 